Ciao guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's world revolves around data. There is no getting around this fact. Every time we log into our laptop or we use our smartphone, we basically leave a trail of data behind us. That data holds insights about what we eat, what we like, what we don't like, um, the conversation that we are having, and maybe even our little secrets. And within this environment, people working within data are probably the most valuable individuals in the professional space today. But with more open roles in the data space than ever before, this initial excitement of seeing all of these available positions and open roles can quickly turn into anxiety where you actually realize how many options are out there and without even considering the positions that you're not even aware of. For those of you who are new to the channel, I'm Lore. I'm based in London and I work for a big tech as a data analyst. And so what happened to me is that I started my career in a area that is called data governance and eventually I uh, got to know more about the data analytics and data science space at the point that I actually switched my career path into more of that area and this is where I am at the moment. And so I really wish I had this kind of clarity at the start of my career because obviously it took me some time to well realize where I was and also understand where I wanted to be. And so in this video I want to bring some clarity on different data roles that are available in an organization. And so if you're planning to enter the data space in your career then I really hope that this video Video can help you to navigate the jargon and actually focus on what is important to you. And so for the purpose of this video I've done some research here and there and I've created a sort of a map that tries to cover uh, the different data roles divided by area and uh, we're gonna go through it together piece by piece. Enough for the intro, uh, let's get into it. Well let's start from the very top of the map. So often in an organization there is someone that is called Chief Data Officer or CDO. And basically the CDO is responsible for all data activities and sits above managers of specialist data departments. And it is true that not every organization have a CDO. So how do they decide whether they need a CDO or not? Well, simply out of internal necessity. Maybe there is a strict regulation coming up or maybe all the business intelligence projects are failing because of data issues. Well, if that is the case, maybe it's a good idea to hire a single person that is liable and responsible for all things related to data. And so now let's go one level below the CDO in the map. And uh, basically the first area that we find within an organization is called uh, data protection. An important thing to note is that, well, often data protection, data privacy or data security, they are kind of used interchangeably. Whereas the reality is that data protection is an umbrella term that includes data security and data privacy. And to clarify these two areas within data protection, I like to use the window example. So if you think about a building, if there is no window in a building, is quite easy for a person from outside to basically sneak in into the property and well violate the security and privacy of a person that is living in that property. But once the window is mounted, that will do a pretty decent job in keeping unwanted parties away from entering uh, the building. However, it will not prevent them to peek in into the building and therefore kind of violating the privacy of the people living within the building, at least not without a court. Thing. And so in this oversimplified example, the window is the security control, whereas the curtain is the privacy control. And so let's now see the roles that are available within the data protection space. So the first one is the data security or data privacy director. And basically this is the person that oversees all security and privacy within the organization. Then we have the data security or privacy analysts. And so these are the roles that help the data security or privacy officer to ensure compliance with all regulations. Then we have the data security or data privacy auditors. They work with data security analysts to minimize the exposure and risk. Then the second area within the map is called data governance. And basically data governance is a collection of processes, policies, standards and metrics that ensure the effective and efficient use of information. 
And so to explain what data governance actually is, I like to use the example of your desktop. So, you know, it's very easy to get messy by creating different folders and subfolders, maybe just throw a lot of files in there with no specific order. Maybe the names of the files are also very random. And so, yeah, that can easily become a complete uh, nightmare. And so basically try to imagine the same thing with uh, data in a huge organization. And so data governance is trying to actually do the kind of structure and order of all the data and information that a firm handles. And so some of the roles that you will find within an organization and within the data governance space are the data governance manager, who basically runs the data governance team. Then we have the data governance lead or specialist. So this is the person that assists the data governance manager. And then as more as a entry level, there is the data governance analyst or consultant. And sometimes it's also called data quality analyst. And this role is responsible for defining, monitoring, reporting, and analyzing data quality across the whole organization. Next up in the data map is something that is called master data management. And so master data management is about designing, building and managing the system that maintains master and reference data for the organization. And so here customer information, for example, the names or uh, phone numbers or email address is a perfect example of master data. And so imagine that you have a account with a specific website and also you usually receive emails or newsletters from the same company in your email address. And now let's say that you have a new email address that you want to use. So you go to the web page in your account and you change your email address over there. If the company doesn't update the newsletter with that new address that you have now, Basically, they will send emails and marketing campaigns to a email address that is not used by anyone. And so you can immediately see that if you mess up with your master data management, if everything is not handled in a kind of a central way, in an organized way, you can miss on opportunities and basically waste a lot of resources and money. And so again, key roles within the master data management area includes the master data management manager, who runs the MDM team. And then we can have the MDM operations manager who manages development, test and production environments and monitors production jobs, fixing errors in a timely fashion. Then at a more entry level, we have the MDM analysts who need to know how to use and update a specific MDM tools. Next up in the map is data infrastructure. So data infrastructure refers to all the various components, including hardware, software, and more to basically enable data consumption, storage and sharing. And so data infrastructure is more and more exciting in the recent years because of the development of Internet of Things and cloud computing, for example, that really increase the amount of data that the infrastructure must support. And so roles within the data infrastructure space are, for example, the data infrastructure engineer who looks after the technical infrastructure and keeps up to date with the latest technology innovations. Then we have the database or more in general the data platforms administrators and this is the role that ensures that all security, backup and access functions are correctly applied. Then another area within the map is called data management and data management designs, builds and manages the whole data environment that extracts, cleans, secures, transform and delivers the data for business consumption. And personally, I absolutely love all the people working in the data management space because basically they are making sure that us as data analysts and uh, data scientists are basically able to get the right data in a very clean format to basically perform analysis. So personal message from me, if you are working in the data management space, I just really appreciate your work so thank you very much and so key roles within the data management space well we have the data architect and the data modeler so these are uh, people who designs the modern data environment then we have the technical architect and this role designs the data and analytics infrastructure using things like apis services containers servers or databases to basically support self-service activities and data analytics solutions then we have data engineers 
who basically create data pipelines uh, required to support a use case or a specific customer request. And the last area within the map is called data science and analytics. And basically the goal of this area is to answer business questions and complex problem well, using data. It is a very exciting area, super popular at the moment. And let me start with the first role within this area that is called data analyst, or sometimes called business analyst or business intelligence analyst, or even data visualization engineer. And well, this is my role at the moment. So what I do is getting the data that is available and then basically trying to use the data to uncover trends and discover any interesting insights that can try to solve that specific question that the business has. Next up, we have the data scientist role and I've done actually a whole video about this specific role. So if you're interested in more about that, you can check the link that I will uh, put somewhere here. And so the role of data scientists is to basically build machine learning models and working with algorithms to make accurate predictions based on collected data. And next role is called machine learning engineer or developer. So basically what they do is feeding a computer algorithm with a, an immense amount of data and have that computer analyze and make data-driven recommendations based on only the input data. So there you go. This is a comprehensive map of the different roles within the data space that are available in an organization. As I told you, I was completely lost at the start of my career. And if you were also a bit confused about the myriads of data roles that are available out there, well, Hopefully now you have a better understanding of the different areas within the data space and also what kind of position you can find within those. If you feel like this video has provided you with maybe a little idea or new concepts that you find interesting, make sure to subscribe, leave a like and the comments down below. And well, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great rest of your day. Ciao for now and see you in the next one.